Is there a pile of rope lying next to your engine starter? If so, you probably need a new starter spring. The starter spring attaches to the starter pulley. When you pull the starter rope, it is the starter spring that winds the rope back into the starter. After years of use, the starter spring will wear. Most commonly, the spring will break at either end where it attaches to the pulley or to the housing. This wear can be accelerated by using excessive force when pulling the starter rope or if the rope is routinely pulled out to its full length. When the starter spring breaks, it won't retract the rope back into the starter. Replacing the starter spring is a repair that you can do yourself, and I'm going to show you how. Hi, I'm Mark Socha. Do-it-yourself repairs like these are easier than you might think. From lawn machines to cordless grills, kitchen mixers, outdoor grills, our how-to videos walk you through each repair from start to finish. So doing it yourself means never having to do it alone. Let's get started. I'll begin by removing the top cover. Next, I'll remove the starter assembly. The first thing I need to do before I disassemble any of the inner components of the starter is to get the tension off the recoil spring. If I removed the central screw and started taking the starter apart without doing that, the spring being under tension would come flying out of the starter housing and it can be quite dangerous. So the first thing I'll do is pull some of the rope out of the starter. I'll pull the rope from the starter handle, untie the knot in the end of the rope or just simply cut it off, especially if you're replacing the rope. I'll go ahead and remove the handle from the rope and I'm going to simply just let go of the rope so that all the tension can come off of the recoil spring. Now remove the rope from the pulley. Even if you're not replacing the rope, you're going to need to take it off of the pulley so that you can re-tension the recoil spring at the end of the repair. So I'll go ahead and just pull it away from the pulley. This screw secures the starter rope to the pulley. I'll go ahead and remove it. And now I can pull the rest of the rope away from the pulley. Now I can remove the central screw that secures the hub and the pulley to the starter. With the screw out of the way, now I can remove the hub. And now I'll remove the assist spring. And now I'll remove the pulley. I want to be careful here when I remove it that the spring releases from the back side of the pulley. You don't want to pull the spring out of the housing or it'll come flying out at you. Now I'll remove the starter spring from the starter housing. This can be fairly dangerous as this spring is going to expand greatly as we remove it. You'll for sure want to wear some safety glasses and it wouldn't be a bad idea to wear some gloves as well. The first step I'm going to use to remove the spring is to turn the housing upside down and tap it against the table. That'll get the spring to drop away from the housing and begin expanding. Now the spring will still expand quite a bit more after that, so you'll want to hold the housing tight against the table until you can get your hand under it to remove the spring in a controlled fashion. Looks like it came all the way out. That's an idea of how large that spring will become when you remove it. You want to be careful doing this. Here I have our new recoil spring. It comes packaged with this red band around it. The spring is actually under tension at this point, so you want to be very careful handling it. When you install this, the idea is to lay it into the housing, line up the tab with the slot on the housing, and drop it down in place. Now you only get one shot at it, and it has to work right the first time, otherwise your spring will look like this. Again, wear safety glasses when you do this, and gloves wouldn't be a bad idea. Now if the spring does come apart on you, you can still install it, it's just a lot harder. To install it, you'll need to take the hook on the outermost part of the spring and insert it into the slot on the housing. Now here's where it gets tricky, and I'll be honest, this is one of the hardest starters I've ever had to rewind. You 
begin to coil the spring into the housing. These first couple of wraps are the hardest because you, you need about three hands to do this. You need to hold that hook into the housing. At the same time, you coil more spring. And the spring wants to jump out of that recess. Once you get a couple of wraps started, it's a little bit easier. And you'll just continue to wrap all the way around until you have the entire spring inside the housing. Right at the end, it becomes quite difficult because you have this small coil that you need to drop in. Your hands are kind of in the way while you're trying to do that. So I'm not going to wrap this entire spring, but that gives you an idea of what you would need to do if the spring did open up on you. It's a trial and error process. It'll probably take you several attempts before you get it right. Now I'll install the new spring. I'll lay the hook over the corresponding slot in the housing. Again, wear your safety glasses when you do this. Now I'm going to use my needle nose pliers to push that hook down into the housing. At the same time, I need to apply downward tension on the spring so it doesn't open up and, and unwind on me. Here we go. I'll push that down in. Now I'm going to allow the spring to begin to open. Again, you need to press downward on this spring. I'm allowing it to unwind. Once it gets out near the edge of the housing, I can pull that retaining ring away and I'll continue to press downward as the spring unwinds into the starter housing and stops rotating on its own. Like that. Now I can install all of the components, starting with the pulley itself. On the back side of the pulley, there's an opening, and I need to line this opening up with the end of the recoil spring. Next comes the starter assist spring. It lines up the hole in the pulley. Now the starter hub, again I align the spring with the hole on the hub. Now I'll secure the assembly using the shouldered screw. Now I need to retention the recoil spring. The first thing I need to do is make sure the pulley is spinning the right direction to pull the rope back into the housing. To do that, I can just simply rotate the pulley a couple of turns and let go and see which way it spins. It was spinning this direction, which would pull the rope back into the housing, which is what we want. So that's the direction I want to turn the pulley when I tension. I'll rotate the pulley around until it stops spinning. That's the most tension that the recoil spring will take. And it's stopped there. So now what I need to do is rotate the pulley back around until the hole where the rope passes through lines up with the hole in the starter housing for the rope right there. With this design of starter, the easiest way to install the rope is to go through the hole in the pulley then I'll grab the rope with a pair of needle nose pliers give me a little bit of slack and then I'll insert the rope through the hole in the starter housing I'll pull all the rope through the two holes until I have just a short tag end of about two or three inches. Now I need to secure the rope to the pulley. To do that, I loop the rope around, passing the rope underneath itself, and then tuck it down into those shoulders. With the rope passing underneath itself, it'll hold it more securely, and I'll secure it with the screw.
Now I'm going to double the rope over itself and tie a simple overhand knot somewhat in the middle of the rope. Now with that knot tied, I can let the rope recoil back into the starter and it'll stop when the knot hits the housing. Now insert the rope through the underside of the starter handle, comes out through the top, another simple overhand knot. Don't want too long of a tag end. Pull that knot up into the opening on the handle. And now I can remove the knot that we tied in the starter, or in the rope at the starter housing, and allow the rest of the rope to recoil into the housing itself. Now I'll reinstall the starter assembly. Give the rope a pull. This will rotate the starter over so that it lines up the hub with the flywheel pawls. Now I'll secure the starter with the screws. And now I can install the cover. Be sure to check back often for new videos and expert advice. If you found this video helpful, give us a thumbs up.